Hi, I'm Mike Lohanian, Client Technology Specialist from Dell. And today I'm here to review the Alienware's most powerful laptop, I like to call them battle stations, the M18. Uh, before we start, I wanted to say I do work for Dell. Um, however, this is my own YouTube channel. Uh, this is my review. Uh, if I make mistakes, uh, I own it. It is, it is on me. I also do want to note that I am not a gamer. Um, I am a casual player of Fortnite and mainly Valorant. I like to play Valorant. Uh, but that being said, I did lend the M18 uh, to some real gamers, right? Some people that are really, really good uh, to let them test it out for a few weeks. And I plan on interviewing one or two of them for this video just so that you get their perspective as well, what they like, what they didn't like. Uh, about the machine. So welcome to my review. Let's dig into the Alienware M18. So who is the M18 for? Who is the target audience? Who would be uh, interested in buying this? Um, I would say uh, this is for a highly competitive players. So maybe you're going from playing with your friends, uh, going now to I'm um, going to tournament level play. Uh, particularly if you're a collegiate esports teams, right? Uh, particularly because they travel, right? And they want to be able to take the most powerful system with them uh, on the road. And I always like to, to remind people, you know, esports is still the wild, wild west, uh, meaning there aren't a lot of regulations around the type of equipment uh, that you get. And because of that, you can buy yourself a superior advantage. And the Alienware M18 is that superior advantage. I'll go through all the specifications and you know, kind of take you through why that is. Um, so let's review the specs of the system. We're gonna start with uh, going underneath the hood and then we'll take a look outside of the system. Okay, underneath the hood, we've got a 13th gen Intel iCore HX processor. It's an i9. Uh, 24 cores up to 5.6 uh, gigahertz uh, burst speed. Uh, it is the 13th gen, it's a 55 watt. By the time this video comes out, um, the 14th gen uh, HX processors will be out. Uh, it is just a refresh of the uh, Raptor Lake processors. Uh, so there's not gonna be an architectural change. You'll just have faster or more cores. Um, available for it. So um, this is the Alienware M18 Series 1. Series 2 will be the um, follow-on to it with the 14th gen. Other than that, the system um, isn't changing. Um, I do want to talk about you know, an HX processor because um, not all Intel processors are equal. Um, and there's a series of them. There's a U series, a P series, an H series, and an HX series. Uh, the U-series processor is what you find in your typical notebook, right? Uh, uh, you buy an Inspiron or a uh, Latitude uh, series uh, notebook, and a U-series is a 15-watt uh, processor. It's really trying to balance that performance with uh, battery life, right? Give me very long battery life, give me good performance. I like to say it's somewhat like a, a four-cylinder um, on a car. Right, get, get pretty good performance, get really good gas mileage on it. Um, as you go up to the P series, that takes you up to a 28 watt processor. That'd be like jumping up to a V6 engine. You're getting yourself a little more uh, performance. Eh, your battery life maybe uh, take a little bit of a hit on that because you've gone from a four cylinder to V6. Then you've got an H class, which is 45 watt. That'd be similar to saying a V8 engine, right? Um, going for more and more power, a little less concern about that battery life or um, gas mileage. Uh, then you've got the top end, right? The HX. It'd be like getting a V12 engine or a, you know, a, a diesel turbo, right? Um, you're really concerned about having the most power that you possibly can because you're doing the highest in workloads. Uh, that's what the Alienware M18 uses. It uses that HX 55 watt uh, processor in the machine. So that is the, the processor, highest in you really can get um, in, a, in a notebook. Um, from a memory perspective, you can either get it in a configurations at 32 gigs or 64 gigs of DDR5 um, at 480 uh, MTs per second. Uh, and it is upgradable memory. So if you start at 32 and later on want to go to 64, uh, they are socketed so you can upgrade um, the memory in the machine. You know, as far as the video card, which is, is something very important to um, gaming, 
right? We do have the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4000 series cards. You have your choice between the 4080, which is 12 gigabytes per second, DDR6, um, a GDDR6 uh, memory, or more importantly, uh, the one everybody's been talking about, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 card with 16 gigs of uh, GDDR6 memory. Uh, why is everybody talking about the 4090 card? Because it can do some crazy stuff. And particularly if you're talking about gaming, it has a technology in it called DLSS or Deep Learning Super Sampling, uh, which can, um, can boost your performance by up to 300% comparative native render rendering um, of the screen. What does that all mean? It's in a sense, it's artificial intelligence that is rendering the display before the scene ever even happens, right? Uh, so it gives you very, very sharp um, and crisp uh, display. In fact, when, when I was testing it and playing Valorant, I was getting over 600 frames per second uh, on, on Valorant when I was playing it. You know, usually if you're in the 100 and something frames per second, you're doing good. You know, I was hitting 600 frames per second on it. So that DLSS is, is critical for highest level gaming. Um, as far as the storage in the system, uh, you can either get a one, two, or four terabyte uh, M.2 PCIe uh, NVMe SSD drive. Uh, the system itself will hold up to four hard drives um, for a total of nine terabytes. You may say, well, well hold on, Mike. Four times four doesn't equal nine. Uh, what's wrong here? Um, you can't use all four, four terabytes. And the reason that is, is two of the M.2 slots are 2230s and the other two are um, 2280s. So you have a limitation there um, based upon the size of, of the, the slot. Um, so total of nine terabytes you can get in it. You know, as far as the wireless, uh, that does use the Intel Killer Wi-Fi 6E AX1675. Uh, uh, has a throughput of uh, 2.4 gigahertz per second. Um, it does support that um, Wi-Fi 6E, which is the six gigahertz band uh, that you can take advantage of. So if you have routers that take uh, do that, you've got that very fast band. Um, it is also an 802.11 AX with Bluetooth uh, in it. You know, as far as the battery, we basically have the biggest battery that you're legally allowed to put in a system. And I say legally, there's there's issues with flying when you go above 100 uh, watt hour uh, battery, but it is a six cell uh, 97 watt hour uh, battery. And you can expect... Mm, Look, if you're buying this machine, you're not buying it because you're you're looking for uh, the longest battery life. You're looking for the biggest performance, right? That's why there's not a U-class processor in this. You're lucky you're going to get around five hours, 47 minutes if you um, play it in um, long battery life mode. But most people, when you're playing this machine, you're going to be playing at full throttle. Um, I would only expect to get an hour or two um, of battery life at, at that level. Uh, plus, you want to keep it plugged in. You're going to get the maximum performance when it's plugged in versus uh, running off battery. Before we get out from inside the machine and start talking about the outside, I really have to address a topic that is that is critical. I And a lot of people don't think about um, the importance of heat management. When you're talking about marathon gaming and it requires absolute power, uh, cooling is essential, right? Our advanced cooling technology, what we call Alienware CryptoTech, is designed to maintain the system's stability even during the most demanding sessions. And what I mean by that is machines get hot. They get very, very hot. And uh, one way a system can deal with heat is to start to throttle the machine. Hey, let's slow things down. Let's slow down the processor. Let's slow down the graphics, right? So the system doesn't overheat. So how do you maintain a system being able to ride at full performance um, without doing that throttling, right? So there is an immense amount of engineering that goes into the Alienware M18 to dissipate that heat, 
to allow you to run at full power so you you game at absolute power and there's really kind of uh four things that i like to point out and this is this is big to why this is such a, a wonderful machine uh, the first level is what we call element 31 which is an exclusive thermal interface material that's located on the cpu and the gpu in a sense what it's doing is this thermal pad is is dissipating uh, heat throughout the system, trying to keep it from uh, centralizing a really hot spot, right? The more it can diffuse that heat, the better. And as well as it will pad from heat going up, right? So the keyboard doesn't feel um, hot, right? Even though the system can be hot underneath it, um, you're not feeling it as, as a player. So that's what the Element 31 for is for. Um, also, we have quad fans. So we have four fans in this machine uh, to get that heat out of it, right? Um, and these are ultra thin fans. Um, and what I mean by that is because they're thin, uh, they have nearly up to 25% um, higher uh, performance than a traditional kind of thicker uh, fan. Um, on top of the fans, there are two other ways that we cool the machine. Uh, one of them is what we call heat pipes, right? And we've got heat pipes that sit on the GPU and the CPU. In a sense, what a heat pipe is, it's very copper. I'll, I'll put the picture up here uh, looking. In a sense, what it is, is inside that heat pipe, it's got a, in a sense, like a sponge around the outside edge that ha holds a liquid in it. And when uh, that liquid starts to get heat, heated up, it turns into a vapor which creates a path to the fan, um, directing that heat to the fan and getting it out of the system quickly. As it gets to the fan, it cools down and turns back into a liquid again. So it just kind of cycles that, that uh, heat out of the machine. Um, that's one way, right? We also have something else, which is called a vapor chamber. Uh, and a vapor chamber is similar to a heat pipe uh, in the fact that it does use, um, in a sense, that sponge on the inside and allows it to um, become a, a gas and then back into a liquid, but it is very uh, flat, um, very wide, and it's bi-directional. So uh, it can pull and send heat out in two different uh, directions, right? So that makes it more uh, efficient. So we both have heat pipes and vapor chambers. Now, one of the questions is like, why aren't vapor chambers in everything? Um, vapor chambers are expensive. They're a lot more expensive than, than a heat pipe. Uh, in the Allenware M18, we actually use both, right? Because it is critical. I want to be able to run this machine at full power for the longest time humanly possible. Because if it starts to slow down, my performance starts to go slow down. And that's where you lose matches. Now let's take a look at the display. And this is really one of the fun things I like. Um, there are two options on the M18. Uh, there's an 18 inch, both of them are gonna be 18 inch. That's what the 18 stands for, M18. Um, just to give you an idea how big 18 inch is, I've got a 13 inch notebook here. And let's put it there and let's see how much more uh, screen you get right uh, massive uh, amount of screen space and um, you know people may say what you know 18 inch it's a bit ridiculous um, it's not not when you're talking about um, eSports and in fact um, you know it's funny when I talk about you know the desktops in the um, and and having you know big displays right people are like hey I want to you know, a curved display or a 34 inch or, uh, you know, something even larger. Um, for eSports, it's really around that 25 inch, um, not any larger than that, 20 inch is, is really the ideal, right? You wanna have it big enough so that you can see um, the playing field, but you don't want things getting out of your peripheral vision. So an 18 inch in a uh, mobile, um, you know, a mobile battle station, uh, is awesome, right? That is what you're looking for um, for competitive play. So uh, option number one, you've got an 18 inch uh, QHD plus, which is a 2560 by 1600 uh, display, a 16 by 10 versus 16 by nine. So that means it's taller. That's why it's called a plus versus, um, you know, just or normal um, QHD. Uh, the first option, it's a refresh rate, 165 Hertz. 
with a um, fast response time of three milliseconds. Um, it's a beautiful display. It has a DCI-P3 or Digital Cinema Initiative uh, Protocol number three at 100%. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, it's 300 nits. It's got a thousand one contrast ratio and it is G-Sync and Adaptive Sync uh, on there. Option number two, which I have here, and this is going to be crazy. It is 18 inch again. Uh, it is full high definition plus. So it's a 1920 by 20, uh, 1920 by 1200, 16 by 10 aspect ratio. But it has a 480 hertz refresh rate, which is insane right um you think about a traditional monitor or corporate monitor today most of them are 60 hertz refresh rate this is at 480 hertz refresh rate with that 300 millisecond response time uh, also has a dcip3 rating of 100 percent 300 nit 1001 g-sync and adaptive sync uh, but i want to talk a little bit about refresh rate and particularly into response time um, some people get you know, go back and forth. And, and what is it? What does refresh rate mean? Um, refresh rate, uh, when I say 480 hertz, that means 480 times per second, this screen refreshes itself, refreshes that image. And why that's important is the faster that refresh rate, the less what you get what we call screen tearing, um, which means that it, it, it gets you know, like something's running, right? And it's more of a skip than it is a smooth. So the faster you can refresh that that display, the smoother it's going to be, particularly when you're playing. Let me tell you the, you know, when I've been, you know, I, I get to, luckily I, I, I get to support Alienware with a lot of, a lot of my um, uh, collegiate customers. And uh, these players, these varsity players, it's a big deal. They see any of the slightest tearing in it. Uh, they get extremely frustrated where someone like me, yeah, yeah, I don't know, um, it doesn't make that big a difference to me, but I'm not playing competitively. Uh, so that is critical, right? So 480 is insane. Now where people get confused sometimes, they'll start looking at the response time, you know, three millisecond response time. So what's that difference between refresh rate and response time? I like to use analogy. I do like to use a lot of analogies, but in this sense, what I like to say is think of, of refresh rate uh, like a drill sergeant and response time being a bunch of soldiers. So uh, an individual soldier, uh, you've got a drill sergeant and a drill sergeant says, do a push up. And all the soldiers do a push up um, as fast as they can. That is the response time, how fast a soldier can uh, do a push up. The refresh rate is how fast the drill sergeant can tell all the soldiers to do a push-up. So in my mind, we're talking about seconds versus milliseconds. To me, it is more important to have a faster refresh rate. I need the commands going out faster all the pixels because the pixels pretty much respond almost instantaneously. I mean, I'm at three milliseconds versus you know 480 times per second. So that's the best way I describe that that uh, response time versus uh, refresh rate. In my opinion, there I'm sure people will comment saying, you know, the the response time is more important. Uh, I'd argue that, um, but I would say the refresh is um, color. Right? Um, we talked about QHD and um, you know full high definition on the resolution. Um, we talk about DC uh, DCI-P3 rating of 100%. Um, that is the um, rating for viewable colors. Um, there is a chart which basically lists all the viewable colors uh, that the human eye can see, and I'll put it on the screen here. Um, originally, uh, we had something called uh, sRGB uh, rating, which is a triangle of an area that said, do you have 100% sRGB? You had to have all visible colors within that. Uh, the Digital Cinema Initiative Protocol 3 expands that triangle out even further. And having 100% says, I see 100% of the colors inside that triangle. Now, the triangle keeps getting bigger and bigger, right, as the protocols. But right now, the DCI, DCI-P3 is the main one Hollywood and cinematographers are using. Um, and it's a drastic uh, difference between um, just having 100% sRGB versus having 100% DCI-P3. And you can actually um, 
by having that improved color, it actually enhances that that resolution. So it, it makes the resolution not as important um, uh, when you have a better color gamut, at least in my opinion, right? When I, I see a really good color gamut, the screen looks wonderful. Um, the, so that is the DCI-P3. So that is a look at the display. Like I said, I really love option two at that 480 um, hertz refresh rate, really top-notch performance. All right, the webcam um, right up here at the top. Uh, it is a full high definition 1080p uh, cam um, webcam. It is an IR webcam with dual ray microphones. You take a look at it, you look really closely. Like for me, I got to put my glasses on to uh, look at it. It looks like a spider looking back at you, right? It's like, what are all those lenses? What are all that's going on up there? Thought a webcam was just a webcam. Well, let me kind of go through it. Um, number one and number six on here are the left and right uh, microphones. So you got uh, dual um, digital sound input um, for your voice recording and, and calls um, you have. So that's the, the left and right side of it. Uh, number two there is the infrared emitter. So it emit, emits an infrared light, um, which is able to, to uh, help track um, uh, uh, motion, right? Number three is the um, infrared camera, right? So you got an emitter that puts out the light. The infrared camera brings that back. Why is this cool? Uh, this is what allows you to do Windows Hello. Um, if you haven't used Windows Hello with uh, facial uh, recognition as your authentication, your login, uh, you're missing out. Um, I use it on my work machine all the time. Uh, all I do is turn on my machine and, and it says, yep, you're Mike O'Hanian and logs me in uh, to the machine. So that is a, a wonderful feature having that infrared cameras on there. Uh, number four is the actual camera itself. And then number five uh, is a camera status light. So uh, when the camera is turned on, uh, the light turns on there so that you know it is um, being, being um, it is on. So that is a look at the webcam. All right, let's take a look at the skin of the machine and then we'll go into the uh, keyboard, which trust me, keyboard is critical in, in gaming. Uh, but if we take a look at the, the outside, um, this is what we call a, a dark metallic uh, moon color. It's kind of a almost a grayish uh, blackish color. Uh, but what you'll notice is when you tap on it, you know, this is an ABS plastic. This is actually um, aluminum and it's an uh, adonisized aluminum. And what does that mean? Adonisized aluminum, it's a uh, electrochemical process. In a sense, what they do is they immerse the uh, metal into a series of tanks, uh, where in one of the tanks uh, is what they call an adonic layer, uh, is grown from the uh, material itself. So it's actually growing aluminum from itself. And because this is an um, adonisized layer, um, you don't need paints on it. So you won't have chipping or peeling uh, of it. It'll never flake. It is actually the metal itself. Um, and it becomes much harder, much stronger uh, than your typical metal. So a really wonderful material that we're using on the outside of the system. Now that we looked at the material, what about the weight of this machine, right? 18 inch, it's a big, big system, right? Uh, again, if you're buying this, it's it's really because you're looking for performance. You're not necessarily concerned about the weight, but the weight is um, important. It is uh, a maximum weight is 8.9 pounds or 4.04 uh, kilograms of, of weight. Uh, so it, it isn't something you want to lug around the airport all day, but man, for the performance you're getting, uh, it really isn't that heavy of a, of a machine. Um, the power supply, um, it's almost comical, it is a 330 watt power supply. It is going to be big. This is it here. It's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's a big, big power supply. But again, you're concerned about getting as much power into the machine as, as well. If you look at the top here, um, we've got uh, two speakers. We've got two, two, uh, two watt speakers, a total of uh, four watts. Sounds really good. Um, but quite frankly, if you're if you're battling on this thing, 
more than likely you're going to be using your your headsets rather than the speakers but the speakers are, are pretty decent on there uh, the touchpad is large right it, it is a very very large touchpad i'll kind of put my hand there so you can see um, how big it is it is a multi-touch gesture touchpad uh, in the left and right um, clicks are on the the side of it and you can it's a physical click you can actually uh, feel it uh, on there the keyboard this is what really is uh, defines it as something special right this is an alienware cherry mx ultra low profile mechanical keyboard this feels wonderful um gosh i wish we would put these in like our precisions uh, commercial products as well it feels so good uh, but not familiar with like mx um cherry keyboards uh it is about it's mechanical right it's like kind of like the old ibm keyboards back in the day uh but for gaming it, it's it's um I keep saying critical, but it is critical, right? It gives you that much resistance without slowing you down. Um, so it feels wonderful. That click that you can feel as you're playing, you know you've really pressed the key versus not pressed it or uh, accidentally uh, pressed it. And when you look underneath these keys, right, these are stainless steel switches that we're using on them. Uh, they're gold-plated um, electrical contact enclosures on them. And it has about a 0.8 or 1.8 uh, millimeter key travel uh, and it is tested to last. It has a uh, 15 million stroke life cycle on it. On top of it being a Cherry MX uh, keyboard, it does have in-key rollover. Say, so what is in-key rollover? Well, a typical keyboard on a notebook, when you press down, say, the uh, Q button on it, uh, it doesn't decipher its Q till it gets to the uh, PC. And in rollover keyboard, uh, every key sends its signal to the, um, you know, sends to the processor. So when I hit Q, um, it's saying Q. And if I hit Q and, I don't know, X at the same time, it deciphers Q and X versus it's sending a signal and the processor has to figure out what Q and X is just makes it very fast it keeps it from getting confused again this is you know professional level uh, gaming a professional level uh, keyboard uh, it is a backlit uh, keyboard an rgb backlit keyboard um, per key so i can change the color of every key on here and you can see i've got a couple examples of uh, different colors that i've put on there you know what colors can you use you can go up to 16.8 million different color variations that you can use on it. Um, kind of crazy, but yeah, you can you can adjust it to that. So that is a look at the keyboard. Again, I can't stress it, how great it is. Also, it is a numeric keypad, so you do have the full numeric keypad um, on the side. Now let's take a look at the ports. Uh, this is a you know M18. We haven't been lying, right? It's a big machine, and with the benefits of that big machine is we get a plethora or a cornucopia of ports uh, on here. So let's start with the right hand side. If you're looking at the the system, this is port number one um, that I'm pointing out, which is the USB C or it's a Type C USB 3.2 Gen 1 port. Uh, if we look at the back, and this is where we get a lot of the ports here. Um, we've got two, uh, and the number two is, there's two of them, is the Type-C port. That is the Thunderbolt uh, 4 uh, port on there, and the USB 4 Gen 2 port with display port uh, 4.1 and 15 watt power supply. That was a lot to say, but what that means is I can actually uh, transfer video out of those ports uh, to uh, external monitor. Uh, personally, I'm a huge fan of Thunderbolt. I love the way it uh, uh, uses um, tunneling rather than uh, channels like uh, USB display alt mode uh, does. So uh, you got the Thunderbolt ports there. Uh, number three is a type A uh, USB 3.2 Gen 1. Uh, and then you've got your HDMI 2.1 out uh, port on here. Um, big deal. You know, you got HDMI 2.0 and you got HDMI 2.1. Doesn't sound like it could be big because why wouldn't they call it three? But let me tell you, there's a big difference between 2.0 and 2.1. Uh, the physical connectors and the cables look the same. Um, so that hasn't changed. So it's the same um, uh, connection type. Uh, but what has changed is the improved uh, bandwidth. 
you go from 18 gigabits per second on HDMI uh, 2.0 to 48 gigabytes per second on HDMI 2.1, and which technically is faster than Thunderbolt 4. Uh, so incredible uh, throughput. What does that mean? Theoretically, you can carry a resolution up to 10K with a frame rate of 120 um, frames per second. Uh, that's the theoretical uh, limitation on that. That is that is pretty impressive, right? Um, if you're going for those higher frame rates, you do need to get a um, HDMI 2.1 cable on there to be able to support that higher resolution and frame uh, frame rate for that. So that is number four, the HDMI. Uh, number five is a mini display port um, uh, 1.4. Uh, if we take a look at the left-hand side of it, uh, number eight is an RJ45, so your Ethernet port is a killer Ethernet. E3100 uh, supports 2.5 gigabit um, per second. Um, to me, if I'm gaming, professionally gaming, I'm plugging into Ethernet, not depending on wireless. Uh, so it's great to have that RJ45 port on there. Uh, number nine, uh, we got two number nines on there. That is uh, two uh, Type A USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. One of them does have power sharing. So if you want to plug your phone into it and charge it, you can. And finally, number 10 is the global headset jack. Don't know if you really need that anymore, but you know, some people that's great. They want their headset jack. Uh, that is on there. That is number 10. So that is a look at the ports. Alienware Command Center or AWCC. Um, I've got it launched here. You can see it is a uh, single interface uh, that allows you to customize and enhance your gaming experience. Uh, AWCC dashboard displays most recently played games. You can do your favorites, most played, or new games that you have. Um, allows you to customize themes and profiles and access settings to your computer, uh, including lighting and, and micros and audio and, and all that. Uh, I've got it running up here. Uh, this is the overall dashboard, but I can get in and I can change things like uh, performance. Uh, remember, I talked about um, you know the battery life, and this is where you would go uh, make these type of changes, right? If you were trying to have the longest battery life possible, um, you could select this, and it goes into something called Express Charge as well, so it charges the battery faster. Right now, I've got it in quiet mode, so the um, the acoustics are running loud. Balanced is what comes out of the factory setting, so. Uh, when you do that, it's balancing battery life, noise, uh, performance. Then you've got a performance mode uh, that prioritizes graphic performance. And then you've got a uh, crazy uh, max <laughs> performance, which basically says run all the fans uh, as fast as you can. Keep this thing constantly cool, uh, regardless of the, um, uh, the noise it creates. And then you can create your own profile as you, if you want. Let me go ahead and put it on max, and I've got Valorant in the background. Let's see um, if you can hear you know, what happens when I, I hit it to max. Uh, let me uh, pull up a, a few things. You can start seeing the fans start to go now. They're boosting up, boosting up, and right here I'm monitoring CPU, GPU, memory, and hard drive drive. But yeah, you can hear that that really starting to uh, kick in, right? Because basically I said, cool, take all the heat out of here as fast as humanly possible. Uh, I'm going to take it back down to a balanced mode and quiet that down for the rest of the, um, the video here. Um, the other one, this is really nice, is the uh, Alienware um, uh, Alien FX, which is your lighting system, right? On the... Top of the notebook, I've got the little Alienware head. I can change the colors to it. On the back of it, I've got the Alienware logo here that I can change the color. And then as well as this uh, light pattern uh, uh, that kind of surrounds the ports in the back exhaust fans uh, that you're able to change. Really nice. Like I said, it's you know crazy amount of colors that you can change it to and, and have it set uh, the way you want. When it comes to the keyboard, I simply clicked on the keyboard and you can customize any of these uh, key colors. They're all individual RGB uh, keys. So if you wanna make them all different types of colors, you, you absolutely can. Um, also here, you've got something called uh, key uh, binds. 
which I've got one, two, three, four, five keys up here that I can program macros to. So if I want to, you know, create a pattern, I can program those keys up there and I can light them the, the way I want. Uh, so that is the Alien FX. Uh, here you can kind of see your library of games and then finally you have an audio settings uh, on it. Uh, but really nice program. Uh, Alienware Command Center is, is um, a great way to, to customize your system to yourself so you have the best gaming experience possible. So I started thinking about it, you know, an M18 um, Alienware, that's a big notebook, right? And more than likely, it won't fit it in your traditional backpack uh, that you have. So, you know, what do you do? On top of if you're a competitive player and you're going on the road, you'll want to probably take your peripherals with you as well. Uh, so keyboard, mouse, uh, headset, you know, that start, uh, starts to add up to a lot of equipment that you're, you're taking. And fortunately, um, we have come up with a, a backpack designed specifically for uh, the M18, and I've got it here. This is the Alienware Horizon uh, Traveler Backpack uh, 18. It is designed for the M18. It's designed for that competitive gamer and everything you need. Um, I like to you know kind of look at the outside. It's actually it's it's really nice. It is a big big backpack, but it isn't uh, doesn't look overly large. Um, does have the Alienware logo um, on it. But one of the things I liked uh, when I first got this in was um, the amount of space I have inside of here to bring bring stuff. And I want to show you uh, one peripheral that you may not think about taking on the road or having a hard time taking on the road. Um, look at that. It fits the full uh, size keyboard. This is the Alienware um, uh, 510. Uh, but that's full size. It fits comfortably in there. It actually has its own little pocket for it uh, that slides in there so it doesn't get uh, all beat up and, and move around. It actually has a pocket in there that you, you put that. Uh, also has a space for, uh, and it's almost like a bubble area here, to be able to put your headset in there protectively, right? So it, it, it doesn't get squished uh, from anything else. So a lot of room for your peripherals. Uh, it is also a TSA bag. And if you're not familiar with TSA, uh, going through some of the uh, airports, they want you to take out your notebook and everything, but this is TSA approved where you can just fold it like this, your notebooks here, all your equipment, and you put that through so you don't have to uh, unload all your electronics. So a lot of room. There's even room for, you know, you put a tablet um, in this space. This front pocket here uh, is kind of nice. This is a, an RFID um, proof uh, front pockets. So if you want to put your credit cards or um, your phone, things like that, people can't go by and, and swipe it. So it's designed uh, for it. Uh, really, really nice case. Um, great material. If you even look at the zippers, how well they designed the zippers and they're, they're larger. Uh, definitely a really quality uh, build on this. Uh, the other thing, a lot of times if nobody tells you, you wouldn't know this. So if you're traveling and you may go, well, what's this here? There's not a pocket. You can see my hand comes out the bottom uh, of it. That's actually for your travel case. So if you have a roller bag and you know how the handle pulls up, you actually can just slide your handle through that so it sits on top of your luggage as you go through the airport if you don't want to have it always on your back. Trust me, if you're traveling, I used to travel all the time. Having things like that was um, was absolutely wonderful. So a uh, quick look at the uh, Alienware Horizon uh, backpack. Definitely go online, check it out. Once you see uh, how it's designed and, and, and what it's used for, it's definitely something you want to get with the M18. Hi, I've got Brian English here uh, with me. Thank you for, for joining. I did something uh, really mean to him. I gave him the M18 for uh, about three weeks yeah, and no, was... uh, let you play with it, and then I took it away. <laughs> yeah, it was the worst thing he could have done. Uh, he had to pry it from my hands. Yeah, so, but the reason I gave it to Brian um, was I wanted to get a, a true gamer's perspective on this, right? Like I said before, I'm not a, I'm not a gamer. I'm a, I'm a casual player. Um, I can't really appreciate that the things that the M18 can do. So I gave it to Brian, who has played tournaments and and is is amazing. I'll I'll show some footage of him doing uh, Fortnite. Um, but I, I wanted to get his perspective. You know, Brian, what did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? Things that you uh, would do because you know if you're out here and you're about to buy this thing, I want you to get a perspective from somebody that knows um, the system. So 
Uh, what did you think? I mean, when you got it, when I first gave it to you and you, you sat down and started playing? Well, I, the first thing that I noticed right away was the, the color keys. Uh, they stand out. You know, everyone usually has a mechanical keyboard that goes with their setup. But with a, a laptop, something more portable, you still kind of get the same desktop feel out of, uh, out of the M18. Yeah. Um, so it, it didn't really feel like you, you were having to play on a laptop, which was nice. Um, the, the screen uh, being uh, 480 hertz uh, refresh rate, uh, it, everything was a lot clearer than, uh, than my previous setup. I have, a, I have a 240 hertz refresh rate monitor at home and, and uh, a decent computer, but uh, once I got my hands on this thing, I, I really didn't <laughs> want to take them off of it. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. I, I was just telling you the same thing. I was playing on this. And then I went back upstairs. I've got a um, uh, an Alienware Tower, the uh, R10. Um, my monitor's 144 hertz refresh rate on that, in which I always thought was good for me. Mm -hmm. Man, it was amazing when really I went back, back to that from here. It's like yeah. <laughs> this is this is terrible, and, it, and it's almost inconceivable. I think you were saying that, right? It's like you. you you know, to look at it, you can't notice it, but once you go up to that level and jump back down, it's so noticeable. I would I would say for the the average gamer, you may not notice the the, the details, but when you're you're doing mechanics where you have uh, you know multiple actions uh, a second, um, it really does make the difference. the The main thing I started to notice was I would actually catch the mistakes that I would be making. I'm you know, uh, I'll play Fortnite and I'm trying to edit a bunch of different tiles. Well, I'll see when I miss a, a tile and, and, <laughs> and I won't just blame lag or internet connection or something. So, yeah. uh, it actually will, will make you dive a little bit deeper into your mechanics and, and end up, uh, you know, getting to be a little bit better. Yeah. So. Very cool. Yeah. I was just, I was watching you play the other day and it was just amazing how fast your, your keystrokes are. <laughs> yeah, the thinking's out of it. I mean, you just gotta uh, gotta go full force sometimes, and uh, you know, uh, in a dire situation, you'd surprise yourself. So, it, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did you think about you know as far as having that forty ninety card in there? Did you see any difference in in what you're doing on your your traditional desktop setup? I, I would say uh, you usually notice uh, less issues, uh, and it's it's not uh, when you have something performing at such a high level, everything is just so clear. And, and this, when you're, there's no tearing, you don't have any, any sort of uh, input lag, um, it, your actions are, are glued to what you're actually seeing on the screen that gives you that immersive uh, experience, which, which really sucks you in, especially in the high pressure situations. I'll yeah. just say that uh, it's easy to get caught up in the moment sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you mean. You know, anything else, anything you didn't like about it? Right, um, you know, you're on a you're on a notebook, right? Which is just different for competitive play. What was it? You know, was there something in there that was uh, a little annoying at all? Or um, I would say there there was one thing, uh, just kind of upon startup that I did notice. Um, there was a, a software that just launches in the background. Um, so unless you go and kind of exit that software ahead of time, uh, when you go and let's say you're moving your mouse around real quick, it'll cause you to click out of your game. Um, but that, um, that, that's just a setting you can turn off. Yeah. Um, as far as like actual gameplay, I would yeah. say the aspect ratio, uh, being 16 by 10 opposed to 16 by nine kind of, uh, took some time to adjust to. Um, but, uh, that larger field of view, uh, was really easy to get used to once you had it. I'd say it's a lot harder to go back to <laughs> the standard size uh after having a little bit better visibility so i felt like i was moving a lot quicker yep uh but could have just been just uh, that difference right there yep so overall you give the system a thumbs up right and this is yeah this is the future <laughs> this is where we're going so yeah uh, uh it's it's hard to think that we're gonna you know top this someday but yeah uh, yeah it's it's definitely got, got great performance and and uh it is a big unit, but surprisingly, I don't think it's that big now that I've been playing with it. I mean, it's... I mean, it's pretty compact for what it is, really. I mean, it gives you a 15.6-inch display um, and then a full keyboard. I mean, you you have a number pad and everything off to the right-hand side, but yet it still fits uh, relatively well in a backpack. It doesn't feel like you're lugging 
uh, you know, a whole desktop oh, around. Right. With you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Cool. Um, anything else? Any last comments? Um, I will, 480 hertz refresh rate. It's, uh, it's going to be nuts once they come out with the next one. That's what, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 500 is the fastest I've seen so far, at I, least in the I alien looked, world. <laughs> I actually looked around, and it not, I couldn't even find hardly any monitors that were close to this. So yeah. the, the laptop screen is is better than any of the monitors you can even find on the market. Right yeah, now. yeah, it's hard to beat. It definitely is impressive specs on there, though. So. Well, Brian, thank you. I appreciate you taking the time. Of course. It's an interview Thanks playing with us. Maybe I'll let you have it back for a little while. <laughs> well, I'm going to get rid of it. Let me yeah, know. That's yeah. right. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, everybody, I appreciate you uh, listening in. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the uh, comments. Thanks.